Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Are you looking for a self-contained power source that can be used on any asteroid? Presenting the P-Melter. This is a plastic boiler. How do we make renewable plastic? We'll get into that. I know this looks complicated, but I will do my best to explain everything in detail so you can build this for yourself. Also, I'll show you how to set up the hot chamber easily, but I won't go into fully building this. Dupe access can be easily added on the left. This takes one kilogram per second of plastic and converts it into power and cold sulfur. Let's get rid of the distractions and I'll show you how this works. So plastic comes in on the rails. As you can see here, we have this valve set to one unit. So this means that one kilo per second of plastic is piped in on these rails. You can see that I've got a very long rail system. The plastic takes forever to melt. You don't wanna root it through these airflow tiles because if it melts there, the naphtha can get stuck inside the airflow tiles and break this system. I recommend sending in a different amount than one kilogram per second because if you have one kilogram per, if you have less than one kilogram per second, it might melt before it gets to here, in which case then it'll just fall down here and freeze or end up as a liquid up on these tiles here, um, which, which is fine for it to happen, but then that naphtha is wasted. So then, the plastic goes through here and you could maybe dial it down to down a little bit less and have your plastic melt up here but again i don't recommend it if you go with more than one kilogram per second of plastic then you might end up having plastic actually not melting off the rails and collecting down here and we don't want that so Back to this, the plastic comes in, circles around on the rails, and you can see it's already melting off here, giving empty baskets. And then the naphtha, you can see here, the purple naphtha comes down. This is just other shenaniganry I've done. Um, the plastic melts in the rails, becomes naphtha, and falls down here. And uh, this provides a bunch of heat up to 555 degrees Celsius to turn it into sour gas. And then sour gas, this is just a massive heat exchange up here so that the sour gas will be 555 degrees here. It'll get to about, well, here it's 160, could be up to 200 degrees up here. And then we freeze it down to minus 180 degrees to create methane here, at which point, we pipe it out using the old one kilogram per second uh, trick. Uh, the way that means is if you put just 10% of the volume through a liquid pipe or a gas pipe, it won't break even though you've over, like right, as, as soon as this methane comes up here and hits these uh, radiant pipes, it should turn into natural gas and break the pipe but since we're only sending 10 percent down it doesn't break the pipe and it won't convert until it exits the pipe or you have to make sure that these pipes always flow or the if uh two packets merge together that pipe will break immediately but using this trick we are able to condense this down a lot smaller than we normally would um normally you can you can you have a few options for for piping out the uh, the methane. You can either have it come up into like a pump room right here, and uh, this will get fairly hot. You'll have to use steel pumps. This will probably get up to 130 degrees, so you'll have to use steel pumps here. And then you can you can pump this anywhere. Um, option is you can just drop the uh the methane directly into the generator room and set up a couple of pumps in here to suck it in or if you want to if you you can make this chamber contain any gas that you want it could be hydrogen it could be steam it could be whatever your heart desires you know orange happens to be my favorite color so i like to do it this way what makes this renewable is we can grow plastic using the ultimate portable plastic geyser the Glossy Dreco. If you want to run the P-Melter constantly, you'll need more than 12 adult Glossy Drecos, but it doesn't need to run constantly if you don't need the power. This Atmos sensor stops the infeed once the natural gas chamber reaches 20 kilograms of pressure. This Drecopod uses domesticated bristle blossoms, which require more water than the P-Melter and three duplicates can provide. 
but it's not hard to ranch Drekos renewably. You can use wild planting, or you can use the uh, flower pot exploit. I'm not gonna go into detail on these here today, but these are some options. Let's set up the hot chamber. This is the first step of the build. You'll need to build this, and then you'll need to drop in at least three tons of depleted uranium, or you can use lead if you're using the base game, you'll need to use lead, but it has a lower thermal capacity, so you wanna use probably about 15 tons of lead in here. Don't put them in as temperature shift plates, make sure they're put in here as debris, because, because, uh, the steam will just delete it for some reason if you use temperature shift plates. Um, this aqua tuner has to be made of the final grade. This is this is the main aqua tuner that makes everything run. So you wanna make this one out of thermium or niobium and it has to be made out of that in this first step. You can't make this out of steel, melt your uranium and, and uh, lead and then deconstruct it and reconstruct uh, it out of thermium you might think so but this thing weighs 1.2 tons if you if you drop in 1.2 tons of of uh, 20 degree thermium it's just going to solidify your uranium or lead so i don't recommend doing that um you want one ton of water down here and uh we're going to suck it out with a steam turbine later over here, you want to put as much water or brine as you can fit in these three tiles. You could even compress it down. You could use nuclear waste. You could get creative if you want, but uh, uh, one ton per tile of water or 1.2 tons of brine, that one's my personal favorite, um, works just fine here. You'll need over 400 kilograms of whatever liquid down here. I have 401 kilos of crude oil for this. Uh, just to as a demonstration up here. You just need something you could put this this thermal sensor down here If you want and just put it in the crude But I put a little bit of petroleum on top just to give it a medium for this to to have Measure the temperature to control this and I've got this set to zero. You could set this to whatever 20 40 whatever you want your well, whatever you want it to be. It's up to you Prime the coolant loop with super coolant. Bridging on is best practice. Twelve seconds later. Now that we have a pool of metal, we can turn on the steam turbine to suck out all the steam. Once you've prepared the hot chamber, you can build the rest of this. You'll want to put naphtha up here and not crude oil so that if any naphtha melts, if any plastic melts on the rail, the naphtha will just stack up here or it'll fall down here and freeze or end up on these tiles where it's fine. And uh, make sure you have all of these settings set up, like especially these have to be set to 1000 grams per second before you seal this off because these require duplicate interaction. This does as well. Um, you'll want to prime the coolant loop up here. And then set, make sure this is set to one and this is set to 0 0.8 and 0 0.8. This, just happens to be the right numbers to, you can set this to 0 0.1 to 0 0.1, but then it clicks a lot more. So I went with 0 0.8 to 0 0.8. This is set to one. I'm gonna turn on this valve, which is now going to send in one kilo per second on the rails. In the beginning, some plastic should make it to the bottom just because um, this chamber hasn't been preheated yet. But once this chamber gets hot up here, it will melt right off the rails before it even hits this bridge. Because of this, I'm just gonna turn this off for a little bit until the sour gas forms. And uh, this gets a little bit hotter up here, hopefully, which should be pretty quick. Once the sour gas forms, it'll conduct a lot of temperature up here. 
I use granite down here just because I don't want, I want to keep this area down here super hot, but I don't want to conduct, I don't want to conduct this 555 degree heat all the way up here and cook this chamber. Like it's supposed to be about 300 degrees difference between here and here. So I use metal up here to try and melt the naphtha and I use granite down here just because I don't want to conduct that heat so quickly. And now we're just waiting for the plastic to melt. Boom, there it is. And bam, we have sour gas. Now at this point, you don't really want to get this thing firing full tilt until you have um, about 50 kilos of liquid down here. That's what this is set to. Um, this is already to temperature, but uh, you'll see some cycling, like um, some natural gas will end up going up and getting pumped out. And you'll have to wait for these tiles to get down to minus 159 degrees before liquid methane will stay down here. Let's just turn this thing back on. Now, we're, as soon as this chamber gets up to about 120, 130, this should stop getting to the bottom. And then it'll melt into naphtha at about up here somewhere, and that'll make this so much more efficient. This tile right here, it's necessary because this tile right here will get super hot. And if, if you've got gas on the other side over here, it will conduct a lot of temperature in it, regard, unless this is an insulated, unless it's made out of insulation, this tile needs to be double insulated. Since this one's touching a liquid, it doesn't actually get hot, and the rest of these don't actually get hot because it's a solid tile. So this is the only sort of weird nub out on this. This is just if um, if your aqua tuner stops working or whatever, and you end up getting a bunch of naphtha down here, and it stays, and you end up with a pool of naphtha up here that stays for more than five seconds, this will set off this sensor, and it'll pause and zoom because then you have major problem you'll I, I tried to make a more automated response but this is just the simplest and elegant thing and the only time this will occur is if your thermal aqua tuner loses power or or something like that there you have it it's functioning uh, at normal now you can see the uh, naphtha is dropping in uh, later it will actually drop higher as the uh, as the plastic melts off the rail sooner and this can power seven natural gas generators 100% of the time, as long as it's fed plastic constantly. And this is just everything included that you need. I've got extra batteries in here. Here's your seven natural gas generators. Here are the two pumps to feed them. The room has to be above three kilos of pressure for them to pump. This is just so that the polluted oxygen should never off gas. And uh, a little bit of automation here. I've got a 30 second buffer here. You might be wondering why it's here. And this is just a battery top up. When this smart battery sends a green signal, once it's full, this buffer gate will tell it to charge for 30 seconds longer just because these jumbo batteries have more capacity and need a little bit of extra juice. And this only controls these top two generators. So these two generators will run 30 seconds longer every time a green signal is sent. <clears throat> you can play with this if you like. Another reason for that buffer gate is it acts as a diode so that when this sends a green signal, it won't get through here and vice versa. This over here is functioned so that um, when this pump goes, it'll pump out whatever gas is in here. And if there's sour gas, this right here will uh, will kick it out. This, this sensor will open up this vent here and that will kick out the sour gas in this room provided it's not over pressure, which, usually, which it should never be, unless you got problems. And then over here, all the natural gas, well, all other gases will go on, but the only, the only thing that'll be left going through is natural gas. And natural gas will go into here and be fed to these generators, but if the natural gas backs up to this point, there's two bridges, it's, it's not joined here. These green outputs are joined and these white outputs are joined. And this creates a buffer spot where it'll tend to jump over this particular tile all the time and carry on unless 
the pipe backs up. This is a very old trick. And uh, then this will detect natural gas and it will turn on these set, these gas pumps and to clear the pipe. This is just so that natural gas doesn't back up and then get put back into the boiler. Um, again, this sensor up here is set to 20 kilos, so you'll just, your plastic will start piling up if this has 20 kilos of pressure in here. You could set up an infinite gas storage and, uh, for, your, for your natural gas if you want. Um, for temperature, you can also see I've set this one down to, uh, to zero, but I've only set this to 40. Natural gas generators tend to gravitate towards 40 degrees. It's kind of their best operating temperature. And uh, down here, I just want, since this is just excess chill, I'm trying to bleed as much chill up into here. So I got this set to zero, but you don't really need to. It also makes a very nice, pretty rainbow. Just as a warning, you don't really want to leave this thing unfed for extremely long periods of time because then this will actually put a whole bunch of heat up into here and you'll end up with, um, when you do turn it on again, very hot methane will make it through the top and will cause this to overheat. So if you make sure that you're always feeding a little bit of plastic to it every once in a while or, or whatever. Don't don't build this and then have your colonists leave and then let it sit idle for a long time. If you do do that, you can dial this down to, um, this could be dialed down to 150 just to keep the, um, and just to keep the uranium liquid, if you got lead down here, you'll have to set it to 350, but you could dial it down that way if you're gonna leave this untended for a long period of time. Now, anywhere you can take a glossy Draco, you can set up a sustainable source of power, water, carbon dioxide, and sulfur. Even barren, geyserless asteroids can be colonized using this. The only input required is some filtration medium. Thanks again for your patronage to Tuxi Industries and please be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our products. We hope you get many cycles of faithful service from your P-Melter. Complaints and refund requests can be sent to 50,000 Shattered Planet Way. Thanks for watching and I hope you're informed, entertained or both. Catch you next time.